malaria. Essentially, malaria is a very famous and common infection uh, with a parasite known as plasmodium. And this is transmitted via a mosquito bite. And it's pretty endemic around the world, in particular places uh, like Africa, Asia, but malaria cases happen pretty much anywhere in the world, but there are certain areas where they're mo more endemic than others. And there's different types of plasmodium. There's plasmodium uh, falciparum, which is uh, a very common one, but there's two others I wanted to mention, plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovule. So just remember those names. Basically, the pathophysiology is that you have a mosquito bite. And initially, this plasmodium will infect the liver, the hepatocytes, liver cells. And then later, it will go to the red blood cells. And then once the red blood cells rupture, that's when the symptomatology begins. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms of malaria initially involve fever, chills, and sweating, profuse sweating. And then later, on physical exam, you can also see signs of anemia, and the liver and spleen will also be enlarged. You have splenomegaly, and then hepatomegaly. And then because the liver is involved, you will also see jaundice in the patient, icterus, things like that, signs of jaundice. In terms of diagnosis, you have to basically do something called a peripheral blood smear, where you have to look under a microscope at these blood cells. Um, and when you look under a microscope, you will see a very classic finding because what you're trying to see is basically the parasite. Um, and they're describing it as a ring form because that's what you see. You see these areas on the peripheral blood smear that kind of look like rings. This type of a shape kind of looks like a ring so that's what you'll see on the peripheral blood smear. In terms of treatment there's many uh, medications for malaria but I'll give you some of the more common ones for pal plasmodium falciparum. Um, atovacone is one of the more common medications but if you're in an area that's chloroquine sensitive then of course you would give chloroquine, which is also a very common malaria drug. With plasmodium vivax, you also give chloroquine, but plasmodium vivax in a chloroquine resistant area, and that will require a different medication. And those medications include quinine plus an antibiotic called doxycycline. So now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. 24-year-old man takes an exotic around the world vacation to Europe, Africa, India, and China. On the holiday, he has frequent sexual encounters and does not use condoms. In addition, he is bitten by mosquitoes many times. On his return, he notes fever, and his physician finds generalized lymphadenopathy, which of the following is the least likely to account for his symptoms. Well, this is a question that's very good because it kind of tells you not to jump immediately to malaria just because the question says mosquitoes. Lymphadenopathy, interestingly, is not part of malaria. So malaria is the least likely. All these other choices will have some form of lymphadenopathy. Next question. Which of the following drugs is the first choice for malaria prophylaxis in an area of the world in which the plasmodium is known to be resistant to multiple drugs? Well, when you have resistance... Some of the choices include quinine and doxycycline. 
So doxycycline is one of the choices, choice B. Chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine is uh, given when you have chloroquine sensitive areas of the world. And finally, 30 year old woman recently back from a photographic safari trip to Tanzania presents with headache, fever, temperature spikes of 40 Celsius, scleral icterus as well. Physical exam reveals tender hepatosplenomegaly. Lab studies show an increase in liver transaminases. CBC shows microcytic anemia and increased retic count. Direct Coombs test result is negative. Results of a urine dipstick test for blood are positive. Peripheral blood smear shows many red blood cells with one to three ring-like structures, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. What's well, a perfect clinical vignette to describe malaria? And that would be choice E, Plasmodium falciparum malaria.